This is the Absolute from the Italian optics company Konos with an absolutely enormous magnification range from 5 to 40 power. And we're going to take a closer look at this scope on this episode of Moondog Industries. All right, let's start with what you get. And rather than doing a tediously long unboxing, I'm just going to show you the contents of the box. So here you go. All right, let's get to it. Let's take a detailed look at the scope and its features. This is the Konos Absolute from Konos of Verona, Italy. And I got a chance to see their entire line when I was at SHOT Show this year. But this one caught my eye. The Absolute is a 5 to 40 by 56 millimeter scope. You heard that right. It's 5 to 40 power. And that's a factor of 8, which is a little bit unusual. The, the highest power scope I've ever used was a 35 power scope. And that uh, only went down to 7 power, so that was a factor of 5. This is a factor of 8, so that is quite noteworthy. And the overall scope is quite well put together. I think mean, it's because they're Italian designers. I don't know, but uh, something about it. Just the lines and everything, I mean, really, really nicely put together. And this has a very generous eye relief of 3.6 inches. Almost too much. This is, this is the reason why I put a cantilever mount on this, is because uh, when I mounted this on uh, my uh, 1022, and, the, and those rifles don't have a huge amount of rail space on top of, of their um, receivers, so I had to put this cantilever mount to be able to get an appropriate amount of eye relief. But, you know, I'm not complaining. Um, most <laughs> nobody wants to have uh, very little eye relief on their scope, especially with a high power rifle. Anyway, um, this is a, has an illuminated reticle, and this is uh, a second focal plane reticle as, as well. Uh, this is the MRAD version uh, of this scope. They're, they also make an MOA version of the scope. It has two color styles of illumination going from zero uh, all the way to five for each illumination brightness setting. The red in five is daylight bright, but, uh, which is great, and you'll get a chance to see that when I test the illumination in a bit. But I had a chance to take a look at this, and it's powered by a single 2032 battery, coin battery, that's in that cap there, and you can unscrew that cap with a, a coin or a flathead screwdriver. And it turns quite easily. Again, it has both blue and red illumination. Uh, on the parallax focus knob, the parallax focus is quite smooth. And here's something noteworthy. It goes down to 10 yards. So that's great if you're shooting air guns and using the scope for air guns or competing in NRL 22 to be uh, able to focus down to, to uh, as close as 10 yards is a nice feature. The turrets. Okay, these are pop uh, to lock or push to lock and pop, pull, pop to uh, unlock. Listen to that. Nice, very audible, tactile positive with really no slop at all between the clicks. Each of the clicks is um, a, a tenth of an AMRAD. Something unusual here. This goes to 7.2 per revolution. Let's see if you can see that. 7.2 per revolution. I don't know why it wasn't a whole number. It may have to do with um, just how they calibrated the uh, range of adjustments and it just happened to fall on 7.2. I don't know why. Well, I've never seen a scope that didn't have a whole number uh, per revolution. But, you know, maybe that's just me. If you know, leave me a comment. The windage is also locking. Maybe just a tad quieter, but really quite audible, quite tactile, positive. And again, also 77.2. So that's a little that's a little odd. These are resettable. Um, they have three set screws on each of the turrets. It has an Allen wrench there. Very small worm screws, but you just loosen those up, pop off the turret, turn it. Once you have, your, of course, your reticle uh, zeroed out turn that, uh, align it with zero, bring it back down and tighten it all up, and you're good to go. It has a, uh, it comes with a throw lever, and that magnification wheel is butter smooth. And you really don't need 
the throw lever really. This is, offers the right amount of resistance and has a little nub, not quite a fin, but a little nub on that ring. So you could really could uh, just remove that. And the ocular focus, butter smooth. And it has a little bit of um, a, a, a mini rubber eye cup there. Also, again, good if you are um, if you're worried about scope bite. But more importantly, it offers you a nice grip as you're turning this. No markings though. So there you go. Quite a well put together scope. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, it just looks something about it just looks quite right. Anyway, but the more important thing, aside from the aesthetics of it, is how does it how well does it perform? Uh, in terms of the glass. So we're going to take it outdoors to the range and try it out next. We are looking at the peak of Mount Davidson, approximately 1,300 yards away, through the scope at its lowest power setting of 5 magnification. And we're doing that so that we can get our best sense of the overall image through the glass. Uh, because you can compare the image inside of the scope to the image outside of the scope in terms of uh, any color shift, brightness shift, contrast, etc. You can also compare it against the hillside here outside of the scope. So as you're seeing, this is what the camera is seeing, and so you can get a good sense of that. And as as we move it up to its higher magnification, we are really just uh, magnifying any faults in the glass as well as losing some light because we are just adding so much more distortion between the various uh, glass elements. So we have it at its maximum power setting of 40, which is quite a significant jump, uh, eight times uh, magnification from its lowest to its highest. So it's not surprising that we're going to lose quite a bit of light. Um, and again, this is what the camera is compensating for. Uh, your eye, your your own um, natural um, eye is going to be much more sensitive and can see much more than the camera does. But to, just to give you a sort of benchmark of what you can expect if you're going up to 40 power here. And uh, you, we didn't see any significant change or noticeable change in point of aim, so that is good. Um, and we also didn't see a shift in terms of uh, the uh, the focus. So that is also a good indication of uh, good good construction and good glass in this scope. All right, what we're seeing to the left of the center reticle and a little bit below is a trail marker sign at the top of the hill. And that is about a six foot tall metal pole with a 30 inch steel sign on top of it. So that's a good proxy for a steel target at this distance. So if you're looking to shoot extreme long range uh, PRS shooting, this is what you could expect in terms roughly of uh, what you'd be seeing through the scope at 40 power. And pulling back to a typical scope magnification of about 24, and I'm approximating here, uh, this is how it compares to a typical uh, 4 to 24 power scope. Next, let's take a look at that illuminated reticle, starting with the blue color setting. One, two, and these two low settings are made for night vision, so it's not surprising we don't see anything. Three, four, five, that's the maximum can kind of barely, I barely see a hint of a tint on there. I see it more clearly when I cover up the objective here. So in low light, you certainly could, could see it in with this blue illumination, but um, let's see what the red illumination looks like. Off, one, two, and again, those are for night vision. Three, four, five, yeah, from four to five, I could definitely see a red glow on those that center of the reticle there. So let me put my hand in front of the objective again. You can clearly see the illumination there. So yeah, in the red setting, I would say it's daylight bright. All right, we're at the rifle range and I've put up some reference targets at 100 yards. And while I'm getting ready, now would be a great time to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell buttons. It just takes a second. It's absolutely free and you're telling the algorithm that this is a good video that other people should watch. The sound was a bit problematic in this section, so I'm just going to voice over this bit. We're looking at a target downrange at 100 yards at the scope's lowest power setting of 5, so we can get a sense of its lowest, widest view. And as we crank this up, all the way up to 40 power, we can see that its point of aim doesn't shift. It's kept its eye relief and general sharpness and focus, which are all good signs. As you increase magnification, in this case 40 power, you're going to reduce the size of your exit pupil, what we call the eye box, and that's just optics. You're going to see that indicated in the footage with a darkening of the edges as we move the reticle to test out the range of adjustments. 
All right, let's take a look at the maximum range of adjustments. Start with the elevation. And there we are, we're bottomed out there. And disregard any shadowing you see at the edges of the, the tube there. That's an artifact of the camera mount and the camera angle there. And that's, uh, that is the top. That's our maxed out. So let's get back to zero there. And let's look at our L windage. That is our max. And that is our max on the left. Let's get this back to the And again, went back to the zero. So let's do the box test. We're gonna do a complete rotation on our elevation. A complete turn on our windage. Complete return on elevation. And a complete turn on windage. And we're back. All right, we're gonna run what my friend Cyclops Joe collect calls his nipple twister test, but this is really a turret abuse test. And I'm just gonna turn these turrets like crazy and we're gonna keep it goes back to zero. Let's crank this back. And, and yeah, dialed in. So went back to zero. Great. Pass that test. Okay, for our next test for our resolution and clarity, I took a still image from the video so that we're not dealing with heat shimmer or any other motion distractions to the image. Let's take a look at that reactive sticker target on the top left. We can easily make out the 22 holes on that reactive sticker target, which is not surprising. But what is notable is that we can also see three bullet holes on paper, and we can even see a lot of texture, the wrinkles on the paper even. Well, you know, this is 40 power. And to the right, that is the US Air Force's optical resolution chart. And I can make out both horizontal and vertical lines all the way down to element one in group zero, which is kind of impressive because I've tested some spotting scopes that can't resolve that level of detail. Now looking at the overall image, it's it's pretty good, but there is a little bit of sort of a glowy softness, which I attribute to just a little hint of chromatic aberration. And you can get a little sense of that with this, the green tinge at the edge of the paper where it, uh, it meets the black of the backing uh, for the target stand. In fact, through the glass, we can see a consistent sharpness from the center to the outer edge, and any distortions we're seeing in this still image is due to heat shimmer. All right, the Konos Absolute is absolutely a great scope if you're doing any long range hunting or bullseye precision shooting, because with 40 power, you're really getting up close and seeing where your shots are landing. Or if you're an older shooter and need that extra magnification, this is uh, definitely a good option. For you ELR guys, well, this is a second fo focal plane only scope and the only reticle options are mil dot and BDC. And if I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about the scope. Who do you think the scope would be perfect for? And if you're interested in picking one up yourself, you can find more product information as well as product links in my full written review at moondogindustries.com. And before you go, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching. Moondog out. Hey, I'd like to know what you thought of this video. Leave me a comment or chat with me on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, MeWe, Instagram, or Locals. And if you want to see all of my videos, go to MoondogIndustries.com.